So Sammy, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for doing this, first of all. Um, can you first tell me um, a little bit about um, um, in your background, um, where you grew up, um, you know, how did your love of Israel start and stuff like that? Thank you for having me, Seth. Um, my name is Sammy. I'm originally from Potomac, Maryland. And my Jewish identity and my Jewish journey has gone through many different stages. One, I went to Camp Ramon, New England, where Seth, you were my counselor for many years. Um, I did USY, where I was regional president in high school. I went to Monroe Orthodox Synagogue. Um, I went to Jewish day school my whole life. And so Israel has always been a part of my life. Oh, and I also have uh, many cousins that live in Israel and an uncle and everything like that. So Israel has always been something that I've wanted to be a part of. And but I've never really said anything because I was all my sister's for it. I didn't want to step on the toes. But I decided to make Aliyah now because I wanted to do the army so I can give back to Israel from what I take. Nice. That's, that's awesome. Um, I, and so tell me about kind of the um, uh, steps you, the, uh, the uh, steps um, up and you took to kind of um, enlist and, um, and move to uh, Israel. Okay. So first off, I made Aliyah, which was a big step because I moved halfway, halfway around the world, away from my family, away from the life I knew. And I have to say, since being Aliyah, I've been through some heartaches within the family and just in life, but still the best decision I've made. Hands down, I love the decision of making Aliyah. But so the steps that I took, I actually drafted through a program called Garin Zabar, where it's a group of lone soldiers that live together on a kibbutz, so that you, you have a family. And what a lone soldier means is a soldier that does not have their mo mom or dad in Israel. So even though I have an uncle who lives in Israel, even though I have many, many family members that live in Israel, I'm still considered a lone soldier because my parents do not live here. And so I drafted through them, so they helped with a lot of the bureaucracy and everything. And actually the unit that I'm in, it's the intelligence corps for the Air Force, which is pretty cool. And I actually got here because I tested so well on my first uh first call sorry i was trying to think of the english word um for the for my first call that they actually talked to my cousins in israel about me before even letting me know i was up for the job. that's very cool wow yeah um so you know um you know being being young you know it you know um, it's definitely difficult to you know move you know thousands and thousands of, of miles away um, how did you handle that? That I'm um, that I'm um, I'm in transition. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, I'm I I'm sure it was um, incredibly tough. But like like you know, um, um, and what did you do to kind of um I um, mean push through to kind of you know, yeah, and um, and to make it happen, and kind of settle. So, Seth, as you know, family is the most important thing. And actually, two weeks after I made Aliyah, my grandfather passed away. And I didn't go back for the funeral because I was about to start an Ulpan. And he told my parents that he, if something were to happen, he did not want me to come home because I was doing something greater than myself. So that has been the biggest struggle. And it happened, I made Aliyah about two years ago. So, and it still eats at me now. So like, that's the biggest struggle where if something big happens to my family, I'm not there to see. Them. I'm not there to be able to comfort my grandmother. I'm not there to be able to hug my dad on his birthday. I was actually supposed to be in the States for Mother's Day. I was supposed to surprise my mom, but Corona happened. So these type of things really eat at me, but like that's honestly the biggest struggle I have. And the way I get through it is I turn to my friends, I turn to my family that's here, I turn to my family in the States. And even though it's hard for all of us, we are able to get through it together because of the support that we have for each other. For sure, absolutely. So, uh, on the flip side, what is like the uh, the the most uh, um, of a positive part? The most uh, you know, kind of you know, um, 
uh, like like um um like the uh, like like your like like the um like like your uh, purposeful reason like you know like uh, like up in the positives of living up in, up in Israel I'm um, in serving and kind of you know the flip side um, up of the uh, up of the last question if that makes sense yes it does I feel immensely proud I feel especially two weeks ago for Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzmaut, um, I feel so immensely proud of the decision I made to make Aliyah when I did so that I could serve. I'm actually considered old for the army, for the Israeli army, even though I'm only 24 and I'm turning 25. Um, everyone's like, you're so old. What are you doing? Why don't, oh, where are your kids? Like all of that. And I'm just like, I decided to do the army now. Um, but I feel a, such a sense of pride for the country, for the uniform, for everything that I do to, excuse me, to help protect Israel. That's amazing and uh, um, um, a, a fantastic um, um, and sound bite. Like that, like that, like 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 yeah. like the uh, thing that I'm I'm, I'm all, like put as, as like I'm I'm a, I'm a highlight of that was that, that was. A very awesome answer. I told you I've done this before. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, um, and you're seasoned, of course. Um, uh, how do you think your uh, Jewish education, specifically um, 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 in the states, kind of uh, helped you um, um, in Israel? Um, and whether it's you know up um, in Judaic studies, whether it's Hebrew, whether it's just kind of you know up um, in Yiddish kind of just just like you know you know um, in values, uh, you know. Um, 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 has that helped you? Stuff like that. So, I've had a lot of Judaic education throughout my life. I think there are three really important things that really helped me make the transition. The first is that at my high school slash middle school slash elementary school, we had this thing called Z Zimria, which was a competition between the grades on Yoma Yomatmo for an Israeli song, dance, skit. It's just a whole competition where the whole school would celebrate Israel. And that always made me so happy because it, it was like one of my favorite days. We could celebrate Israel. I could go crazy. I could celebrate the country I love. And so it just, that was one of the things that wanted me to come here. The second, honestly, probably would be camp because of all the Mishlacha members that we had from Ayal, who I still see every now and then, by the way. Um, from all the programming that we had about Israel, from everything like that. And then the third is I've honestly always kind of had the Israeli mindset of being aggressively nice. Like, <laughs> everyone is so nice here. And if you try to, like, step away from the niceness and just try and step away so you can have some time for yourself, they get offended. And I've always kind of been like that. So I think that those three things have helped me make the transition a lot easier. Very cool. That's true. I, I mean, you are very, very nice. So that's it. Which, which, which I'm, you know, I've, I, I, I've always seen as, um, as a, um, a tremendous positive. So that's good. Um, so now that you are in the army and have been there for um, um, two years, what are your um, up and responsibility? Um, up and what's your like um, up in position stuff like that? So I can't really say what I do, um, but I can say that I work with the F thirty five planes, the, the planes that the newest planes that Israel has received from the states. And so all I can say is what I do is pretty cool. And that I know that if I don't do my job, bad things could happen. Understood. Very cool. Um, so why specifically, so you're um, um, up in the Air Force, correct? Yes. So why specifically um, the Israeli Air Force um, and, um, and, um, and, um, and did you choose that or did the Army choose that? So the Army wanted me for intelligence with the 
And because of the program I am in for drafting and everything like that, I was not allowed to be on an open base, which means it's a nine to five job. So the Air Force is the only part branch of the military where if you're in intelligence, it does not have to be a nine to five job. And so I, my base is down south. It's called Niva Team. And my kibbutz is super north. It's called Teliao. And it's about a seven hour journey from base to home. But I do it, uh, before Corona, I used to do it almost every week. Wow. Twice. Okay. There and back. <laughs> that, that is up a, up a commute. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the final thing, you know, I will ask you is, um, what would you say to, you know, a, uh, you know, someone up in the States who, who, who has that um, internal love um, and for Israel and is thinking of thinking uh, and thinking of, uh, about taking them up in that jump um, up, up and moving and um up and making um, Aliyah, um, I, up and, you know, and what would you say to them, some, them to kind of like uh, push them to actually do it? Are you saying like a young person where if they make Aliyah, they would draft? Or are you saying someone past the age of drafting? Um, let's say both. So good, because I'm kind of in the middle of both. Um, so for the young people out there, the high schoolers, if you're thinking of that, college might not be for you right now and you want to draft and make Aliyah and protect the country you love, highly recommend it. The army does suck at times, but yet that's the military. It's, you're not going somewhere to get cakes and cookies. You're going somewhere to really defend the country that you love. And for me, I really needed that when I decided. It wasn't like I was a I was a I was a manager of a few places. I worked at many different jobs, but I needed something to really make me feel good about what I was doing. And drafting really made me feel good. And it not necessarily gave me a direction in life, but it really set me forward on how I want to present myself and how I want to hold myself moving forward. For those who are older than the age of twenty three because 23, you don't have to draft. It's only if you want to. Um, that's when I drafted, because I actually, like, a month after I turned 23, I drafted. Um, I still recommend coming to Israel. I still recommend making an Aliyah. If you don't want to draft at, after the age of 23, you don't have to. Um, you could, sir, you can uh, be with Mada, Magen David Adom, and, like, just volunteer with them. Like, I, I know so many people that are that made Aliyah when they were 26, 27, and they, for six months, volunteered with Magen David Adom or volunteered at an old age home. Or even on my kibbutz, we have a ref at a, a dairy farm, and people come and volunteer there all the time for like six months at a time. I, I highly recommend moving to Israel, making Aliyah. Best decision I ever made. And yeah, that's awesome, Sammy. Thank you so much for for taking um um the time um up and talking with me today. Um, um, I really appreciate it. And of course, thank you for um um in your service. Really, like it it it, it is truly uh, um inspiring and just, just um um and knowing you from you know um um I've been growing up, just like seeing you now and um up and you're really shining. It's it's um it's amazing to see. It really is. So thank you. Of course.